G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. In this video we're going to be looking at how to verify a downloaded ISO for Windows and Linux. Now before I get started on that, just want to give a couple of shout outs and, and one is for Windows. I was just to make sure I found the easiest way to do this in Windows because I don't really, I've never really verified an ISO in Windows before to be honest. So this person here, 2013 Electronics and Computers, I'll leave his um, link to this in the description if you want to check that out. And also a good friend of mine within the Linux community, um, Sleepy Eyes Vince. Vince has also a video on how to verify checksums as well in the Linux terminal. So that's quite a good video as well. Now the reason, and, and I think I did tell him that, uh, yeah, great vid. I was considering a video regarding this topic, but I don't have to. I'll send people his way. Now the reason I wanted to make my own video was because I get a lot of people making comments on YouTube regarding sometimes the installer, and it's mainly, I think, Ubuntu, uh, could be Linux Mint as well, and they say that I don't see this in the installer as what I see in the video, and this, I cannot find this, and I cannot find that, and I can't remember exactly um, what they were pointing out, but the moral of the story is, um, a lot of people who are new to Linux don't verify the ISO and that can be an issue because I need to know if I'm going to help them out and I'm happy, happy to help them out. I'll help everybody out that comments on my YouTube videos as much as I can but I need to know that that ISO and the integrity of it is correct before I start helping because if it's not then my help is just going to be worthless to be honest. I thought I would include the Linux and the Windows um, verification because most of the time newer people coming to Linux will be using a Windows operating system without a doubt. They'll probably be downloading it in Windows. Really the ISO needs to be checked. Now when we talk about a corrupted ISO, you've got examples like a um, little while ago Linux Mint's website got hacked by somebody I believe it was uh, the story doesn't matter but the, the moral of the story here is somebody messed around with their ISOs so the integrity of the ISOs were wrong so if you were checking the the checksum values of the downloaded ISO it would not have matched what they had up on their website you would have been questioning that straight away but not only that it doesn't mean that a, cor um, a corrupted ISO has been tampered with it also could be that when you downloaded it, you could have had a bad download connection. It would have um, it would have stopped downloading. You've probably pressed resume the download, and that could have happened multiple times. Um, maybe the download wasn't downloaded correctly in the entirety of the ISO itself. Therefore, it could be corrupted. That's another reason why we say it, the ISO could be corrupted. Not because anyone's tampered with it, because the download wasn't downloaded correctly in the first place. So on the Ubuntu website, if you go to this website, and I think I came here from here. So if you click on this, um, that's the Ubuntu download page. Um, it'll probably start downloading automatically like so. I'm just going to cancel that because I've already downloaded it. Um, but you can verify your download here. Now this is a Ubuntu specific checking this one. So let's do that. So just as an example, mine is in downloads and I keep all my ISOs in a folder called ISO. Yours might be in your downloads folder, wherever your ISO is. Then what you do is, if we have a look here, just quickly, I've got Ubuntu 20.04 and Ubuntu 20.04.1. So if we was to open a terminal here, then it's pointing into the downloads ISO folder. So that's where the ISO is. Now we can copy and paste this command into the terminal, enter that, and the output of that should say, you can see down here, OK. So we'll just wait for that to complete. And 
And as you can see there, according to here, if we have a look here, Ubuntu 20.04.1 desktop AMD 64.ISO is okay. So that's an Ubuntu specific thing. So let's clear that screen. Uh, let's clear it. What if we're doing something else? So, so on this page here, we've got um, Ubuntu hashes. So if, um, you've got all the different Ubuntus here. If we click on this one here, then you can see that you've got all the different Ubuntus there. Um, Twenty dot. If you click on this one, it's still going to be the dot one. I cannot. I couldn't find the dot zero four one. So if we click on that. Actually, let's just open everything in a new tab so we can follow this. And then you've got the sums here. So if you click on that, it'll take you to here. And that is your checksum. And that is the, um, the SHA256 sum. So now that we've got that checksum there, and I've downloaded that and I've um, put it in a text document. So here it is here. And that is the checksum for that. So we need to get the same output as this. So what we're going to do here is uh, we'll close that terminal and what we'll do is once again go to the folder where your ISO is like so open in terminal here. Now what we can do here is uh, if we have a look at um, this one here in Linux file browser navigate to the folder with the ISO right click and open terminal here which we have done um, we can do either one of these. We'll do the SHA256. SHA256 sum. And Ubuntu, start typing that, hit the tab key. Now that's only going to complete up to Ubuntu. And the reason why it's doing that is because I have more than one Ubuntu. So I have this one here, I have this one here, I have plenty of them here. So I want the 20.04-1. So I'm going to type a dash 20 and then hit the tab. And then I need to type the dot one tab, amd.64.iso, because there's only one of those there. The rest are 20.04. So that's what we need to do, that command there, as you can see. And we'll press enter. And there's our checksum there. So if I was to, now that's the checksum there. So what I need to do is just so I, just for clarity purposes, I'll copy that into, I'm going to copy this checksum into a new tab here, to a new document. And then I'm going to double click this one and control shift C to copy and then control V to paste in here. And if we have a look at that, if we check that out, you'll see that looking closely that that all looks very much the same. So the integrity of that ISO is very correct as far as the SHA256 sum is concerned. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check the integrity of the download in Windows. So you're running Windows, you've downloaded your Ubuntu ISO. So we're just going to navigate to that folder there. And as I mentioned earlier, this person here, 2013 Electronics and Computers, um, in Windows File Browser, navigate to folder with the ISO, hold the Shift key, right click, an open power shell window here. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to hold the shift key down, right click and open power shell window here. Okay, now what is recommended here is we type this command here into the power shell. Now MD5 SHA256, sorry, this one here, SHA256. We don't put sum at the end because Windows works a bit differently. So this is what we're going to do. Cert util. So probably certify the utility. Maybe that's what it means. I don't know. I'm just making up my own words. But it's always good to make up your own words so you can remember what you're doing. That's what I do anyway. 
<laughs> um, space dash hash file space Ubuntu. Now I've only got one there, so I'll start typing Ubuntu. I'll also hit the tab key in the PowerShell and that's auto completed the Ubuntu desktop AMD 64.iso. Hit space and then we type in SHA256 and press enter. And that has completed. So what I'm going to do here is open up Notepad. Double click that, control C and in Notepad, control V. And then I want to compare those two there. If we have a look at those two. Okay, so that all looks correct. So that is how you successfully check the SHA256 sum in Windows. You can do the same thing if you was to arrow up like you do in Linux. You get the same command and you can just type in MD5 or SHA1 or SHA2, whatever the, the, um, whatever the checksum happens to be, that's how you do that. Now in Linux, it would be MD5 sum, SHA1 sum, A2 sum, and so forth. So that's how that works as well. So just as an example, if we want to get away from Ubuntu a little bit and, and say we wanted to download Linux Mint. Um, so we go to download Linux Mint 20, for example. And then we come down here and we choose our desktop flavor. In this case, I'll choose cinnamon. And you'll have here, don't forget to verify your ISO. So uh, we're looking at 20, which is what we downloaded. And there's the SHA256 sum. So there it is for cinnamon. So you get all those as well. So let's just, I'm pretty sure I've got uh, cinnamon downloaded. Let's just check that out. Um, Linux Mint 19.3, Linux Mint 20 Cinnamon. So let's just do that and just double check that. This is a Linux one. So um, let's just open terminal here or open terminal. So we go SHA256 sum Linux or just type part of it, hit the tab key. Now Linux Mint now it's picked up, there's a 19.3, there's a 20, so it's waiting for me to tell it which one it is. I'll go 20, hit the tab key again, and as you can see, it's auto-completed that ISO, and we hit enter. And once again, I will do the same thing here. Let's delete this one, and we'll go for the Linux Mint one. Let's copy and paste that one there, and then we need to do get the one from the terminal, which will be control shift C and then control V. And as you can see, that is a verified Linux Mint 20 SHA256 sum. So there's nothing wrong with that um, ISO at all. You do have to go through every one to make sure they all are the same, but I can pretty much see from a quick look, it looks very much the same. So most ISOs that you download should have a check sum. And um, most of the time now, it used to be a lot of MD5, now it seems to be SHA256. It's best that you verify these things before you use that ISO to make sure that it is correct. It can save you a lot of errors on startup, on booting up the live system, installing, because um, there can be some things missing. I've had that problem before with a Linux Mint one, and I think there was a, a badly downloaded Linux Mint ISO once that I was trying to install, and I tried to install it about five or six times I got a video on that one and um, it turned out to be there was some sort of error with the ISO. It was corrected pretty quickly by the Linux Mint team 
and uh, everything was fine after that. So it just goes to show the importance of checking and verifying your ISOs before using them. So that was a video on how to verify a downloaded ISO in Linux and Windows. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.